the son of the gun, Tej Narang Chandapo. He showed class, he showed techniques, he showed discipline, he showed aggression, he showed flair, he showed good judgment. He was the only standout West Indian batsman. He was the only one that gave us hope that there may be a brighter future. For while he stood and showed all of these characteristics and all of these class and showed good judgment of which ball to leave and which not to leave, the, West, the rest of the West Indies batsmen faltered around him. They limped in and limped off. Hello, everyone. Good morning. On a wet and cold morning in Jamaica, I hope you are feeling warm wherever in the world you may be. Thank you for tuning in and welcome to the Cricket Forum. Please slash a like on the video, share and subscribe. It was another pathetic batting display from the West Indies batsmen. Their bowlers never bowl as well as they did in the first test. What an example Devon Thomas said. But before I go into the analysis of the match, I want to tell the West Indies Cricket Board here and now that they should offer Shivnarin Chandapal, not Tage, Shivnarin, the legendary West Indies batsman, who is the father of Tage Chandapal. Not the West Indies head coach job, but they should offer him the job as West Indies development officer with responsibility for coaching under 12 cricketers in the West Indies. For him to have Chanda Paul batting like that, his son, he must know something about developing young talent. So I'm saying to the West Indies Cricket Board here and now, and I hope they hear me, because they listen, they monitor these showing up. All of these shows that criticize and analyze the West Indies performance, they have somebody monitoring these shows. So I hope they take back the message. Shivnarin Chandapur, although he has a very nice job as coach of the U.S. female team, a very cushy job. Offering him a job as under 12 development cricket officer in the West Indies. And let him go around the West Indies and have clinics, proper, well-structured clinics. And coach these under 12 boys and girls. And just maybe, and just highly possible, that in the next 10 years, that we will see the fruit of his labor. And that is my suggestion to the West Indies Cricket Board. Employ Shivnarin Chandapal as an under 12 development cricket officer with responsibility for coaching under 12 boys and girls in the region. Now, Australia started the second day's play on 3.30 for three. They went on to make 511 for seven declare. Travis Ed made 175 and Labos Chain made 163 in a partnership of almost 300 runs. I think it was 297. I think they need another three runs to make it a 300 runs partnership. The West Indies bowling was all over the place. The captain set a 5 4 field. Instead of probably set a 6 3 or a 7 2 field and asked the bowlers to bowl on one side of the wicket. The bowlers were all over the place. They didn't bowl a consistent length and a consistent line. Joseph in his usual self was fast, but I don't think that he had the control that is required. Older who went for two runs per over on the first day did not show that same control and his speed was way down. And I'm asking the question about older. And compare him to Darren Sammy, 
when Darren Sammy was bowling at that same speed, the entire Caribbean was on the back of Darren Sammy saying that he's not a bowler. He's too slow to be bowling the ball for West Indies. What is the difference between Darren Sammy and Jason Older? I am asking the question. Please answer it for me. I do not know the answer. But what Darren Sammy was doing when we were criticizing him in test cricket, Older is doing no different at this moment in his career. He would have done better in the past, but at this moment, Older is not doing anything different from what we were criticizing Darren Sammy about. Now to Devon Thomas. And I want to commend Devon Thomas because he was the only bowler. He bowled at 125, 126. But he came and he pitched up the ball on a length, on a line and length, not trying anything, just nip, nip, nipping it away a little and nipping it in a little, just on a line and length, just hitting one spot. And that's when West Indies got the breakthrough, when you have Lubbock chain caught by the silver. What a wonderful catch it was. He was standing up. It was not an... It was not a simple nick. It was a big nick off the bat, almost as if Lubber Chain opened in the face of the bat. It was a very, very good catch by the Silver. And then the very next ball, Devon Thomas would have gotten another, another wicket if Kyle Mayers never dodged the catch at first leg. For a bowler who's, who were bowling at 125, 126 kilometers per hour, Kyle Myers was far, far too deep at first slip. He should have been closer. And it was no surprise that they removed him from first slip because it appears that he was stubborn and decided that he was not going to come closer. But Thomas would have gotten two wickets in two deliveries just by running in and pitching the ball on a spot. In the end, he bowled five overs today and got a wicket for 10 runs. Well done, Devon Thomas. Overall, he got two for 53 from his 14 overs. Joseph, two for 117 from his one over, from his 31 overs. There was a wicket for Holder and there was a wicket for Bratwade. And Thomas also ran Travis Ed out for 175. So it was a good day for Thomas in the field. Although I think that when he got out, he was a bit lazy on the shot. 17 runs already came off Cameron Green over. And I really think that he was just defending the ball, but was just a little bit lazy. Is it that he was tired? Is it that he was tired? Because it's the first time he probably had bowled so many overs in a match and then asked to come back to bat so quickly. His dismissal was unfortunate. I just think that he played a little late and the ball bounced onto his stump. Blackwood dismissal. I don't know what he was doing. Another poor shot. He, I could simply put, he tapped it back to Lions. Lions adjust himself and took a simple catch. I don't know how else to explain Blackwood dismissal. The captain, Bratway, what a lovely delivery got. The difference between Michael Nesser and the West Indies bowlers is that he consistently challenged the batsmen outside the half stump, the top of half stump, that fourth stump line. Consistently, consistently. And he got up the perfect delivery to get rid of Bratwick. I cannot complain about the Bratwick dismissal. Brooks, Brooks got a similar to delivery to Bratwick. Brooks' delivery, in my opinion, although it was probably a little further outside the Aston than Bratwick, I think it was a better delivery. And this is my opinion. Because I think Brooks' delivery, it came in, it came in. When, the, when Nessa let, it, let go the delivery, it came in through the air and touched down and straightened. And I just think that Brooks was forced to play. I won't blame Bratwaite and Brooks for their dismissal. What I would say is a consistently see of, May, of Nessa consistently challenging the West Indian batsmen on that fourth stump, that half stump, foot stump, is a consistency of the Australian bowler Nessa. We were the Stark, we were the Bolan, but then Nessa, who is said to be the man who have the most 12-man appointment in Australian cricket. This is his second test, and he bowled well. Remember, I warned you, in the Prime Minister's 11 match, 
that despite Lesser being so expensive, it was unusual because he really just hit that one spot time and time again. But despite all of that, despite all that was happening around him, one man stood tall, Tej Narayan Chandapal. His judgment was impeccable. His defense was solid. His techniques was at the highest standard. What his aggression was spot on. His shot selection was spot on. He showed a little flair. And that six that he swept off Lions was brilliant. Chanda Paul stood tall as the, West, as the rest of the West Indies batsmen crumbled around him. And I'm wondering, are we witnessing the birth of another superstar in the name of Chanda Paul? It is too early to call. But Chanda Paul so far in these three test innings that we have saw him, have stood out. have given, given us hope. have given us encouragement. And when things are dark, you look for any spot of light. And then Chanda Paul shone brightly on the second day's play of the second test between Australia and West Indies. Good. I'm just looking at your comment. Let me get my glasses. Craig Mohammed, good morning and good morning to everyone and thank you for joining the chat. Young Shiv fighting alone, similarly to his father back in the day. Thomas wasn't bad. Sorry, he didn't get more runs. Thank you for that, Craig Mohammed. Sheldon Smith. What future when a player in his first test have to save West Indies? First test series, I think you mean, Sheldon. Shiv was on the team at 19. Tage is 26 and was almost dropped from the guy on the team until he had this purple patch. Supernova 22. Ola is much, much more consistent bowler than Sammy Lal. Right now, Ola problem is with the bat, not with the ball. Supernova, Supernova 22. I, I would like to point out something to you. In Ola last five match and this is a six match Le all the last six match bowling for the west indies in his last 11 innings bowling for the west indies older have taken six wickets overall that's six matches for six wickets if we're judging older on the performances in fact in all the last 15 test matches for the west indies he has gotten five wickets in a match. Not in an innings, in a match only once. Five. And he got a four two times in his last 15 test match. I'm just telling you his statistics. Analyze it how you wish Supernova. And welcome to the show. And thank you always for your contribution. But I'm telling you the statistics. All the last six test match for the West Indies, including this one. So five and a half. He has gotten only six wickets for the West Indies. In two of those five matches, he got no wicket in the match. And that's what I'm saying. If Darren Sammy was performing like this, we would have had his throat. Check it for yourself. Welcome, DeAndre Thompson. How are you? Good morning. West Indies is really a waste now. Now I know why my friend call the waste, calls the waste in this. A number of persons do call it that, DeAndre. West Indies is a waste now. Okay, that's that's a similar comment to the one you have at the top there. Clive Smith. Clive Smith, are you going to tell us about the bowlers? Morning, my brother. What time do you start each day? I want to come on from the start so I don't ask questions that you addressed already. I try to start anywhere around 9.30 to 10.30 in the morning. Now, that's a good point to make because consistency and knowing is really a, a, a good factor. So in the future, I will try to set an exact time when I come when I come on each morning. So at the moment now, I try to come on anywhere between 9.30 and 10.30, but I'll try to standardize it and try to meet that. So good point, Clive Smith. Thank you very much. Craig Mohammed, Chase owes us 60 plus runs with the bat. I hope him, older and the silver, offer some resistance. 
We all do hope that they offer the resistance. Older will come back. Don't pressure him. Yusuf Greenwich, I'm not pressuring older. I know that you're a fan of older. And I know you want to see him do well. Wouldn't you be happier if older were getting more wickets? It's not a matter of pressure. I won't pressure a West Indian batsman, but I'm a commentator and I analyze it as I see it. It's not about pressure. I know you'd be happy. If older had gotten five for 60 in this match, wouldn't you be happy? I would be too. So when he doesn't perform, I have to say he doesn't perform because it affects the whole team. Not only his lack of performance affects the whole team, but in his last five matches before this one, he has only gotten five wickets, and that is his performance. Is that pressure? Wouldn't you have loved for him to get 25 wickets in those last five matches? We all do. But I state the fact as it is, Greenwich. Thank you for your contribution. We all love older, but we talk about his performances. And you, can, you should not say we should not talk about his performances because when he does well, I will be the first one to praise him also. But when he does poorly, for the integrity of this show, for the consistency of this show, I have to talk about his poor performances. Just like how I praise Thomas for what I consider not an outstanding performance, but an above average performance. I praise Chanda Paul for his wonderful batting. If Older does something well, I'm going to praise him. Yesterday I spoke that Older bowled 21 overs for 42 runs and he was very consistent and he was very tight. But today he didn't bowl so well. And over his last six matches, he has not been performing so well. So Yusuf Greenwich, I'm not attacking Older and I'm not attacking you. I'm just sharing my opinion. And I'm really glad that you share yours. But older need to come to the party. Mr. Brathwaite's captaincy was very poor last night. Yusuf Greenwich, nice. And I see that you're a balanced person. I see that you're a balanced person. Because you, because Brathwaite's captaincy was very poor indeed. And I love that point. You are such a balanced person. I love it. That's why I always said that the persons in this community... They, they taught the truth, they balance it out. And that's why I love this community so much. That's why you're such a magnificent community. I know older hasn't been too penetrative with the ball, but I would say that older is usually an economical pressure builder and the other bowlers need to strike. We need important runs from Jason. Good, solid comment, Casanova. Good, solid comment. comment. I love, I love it. I love it. Good morning, Robbie McLagan. And Cornell Owens, the older, is batting too high. So I appreciate all your comments coming in. Now, one of the things that have been happening, and I must say, I must I want to address quickly before one of the before I go to one of the things that people have been saying about hope should be in the team. I'm going to address that shortly. But one of the things I want to make clear here, and I, I, I'm sorry I do not have my, my phone on me, but the issue with Minley, and I made it clear yesterday that I believe that Minley left Jamaica very fit and probably playing in his first test match, eager to prove he overstried and did his hamstring. I want to say that that, that seemed a logical answer. What I've been doing, though, I've been calling upon the West Indies to issue a statement. You know, show accountability. Tell us that Minley, who I know, I know for a fact that he was training with the Jamaican Scorpion and he was very fit. I know that. I know that and he was doing some good work. And I would think that he was very fit. We also know that Minley was injured in the Super 50. West Indies, Cricket West Indies need to come forward and tell us what Minley injury was at the Super 50. Cricket West Indies need to come forward and tell us if Minley was checked by its medical team in Jamaica before he went on that plane. 
Cricket West Indies need to come forward and tell us whether Minley flow first class to Australia or he was placing economy. They need to clear up those things. If they clear up those things, then we will just accept it that Minley injury was just one of those things that happened to sportsmen. And because of his short turnaround time, because, of the sh because he arrived in Australia probably about 48 hours before the match. Maybe he was unable to train with the team because of the protocols that are now in place. So I just want Cricket West Indies to tell us the process that was involved from Minley getting that call and reaching Australia. Just tell us, Cricket West Indies, just come forward and make a statement and so ease our doubt. Because the major concern that I have in all of this is how did Minley flown to Australia? Was it first class or was it economy? That is my major concern in all of this because I think he was fit. I, I got a number for the physical trainer for the Jamaica Scorpion, and I sent him a text message yesterday and asked him if he wants, and told him that I would like to interview him about the Minley situation, and he declined. He declined to come on. So take that for what you may. I don't know if he's hiding something or he just straight declined or he probably need clearance from Cricket West Indies. I don't know what it is. But Cricket West Indies need to come forward and issue a statement about Minley. We cannot fly some flown somebody halfway across the world to the bottom of the world we used to call it down under, and he owned the ball two overs without an explanation. Cricket West Indies need to come forward and say something. And when they say something, we will understand. But they just cannot remain quiet like that. The other thing that I would like to discuss is that a number of persons are calling for Shea Hope in the team. Now, we must remember that Shea Hope average is 25 in test cricket. Would I pick Shea Hope the next time the West Indies is playing? Yes, I would, despite his 25 average. Why? When Shea Hope was dropped, I was in agreement with it. That averaging 25 in test cricket, you should give others a chance to see if they can do better. Now that you have given everybody else a chance, you see that they are not doing better than hope. 25 in test cricket is not special. But I'd pick Shea Hope for the next test series because it's clear that despite averaging 25, which is the same amount that Brooks is averaging, I think Brooks averaged 24.77 or thereabout. Most West Indies batsmen average just around 25, except for the captain. Older one of the time was near 30. He's now below 30. So yes, I would pick Shea Hope for the next West Indies Test Series. But Shea Hope doesn't necessarily as a place in this team right now in Australia. Others need to get a chance to perform. And the other person who must be in the next West Indies team is Brandon King. Apart from Chanda Paul and Brathwaite, Brandon King, having played 32 first-class match in the region, have a top score of 194. And the one match he played earlier this year before he went away and West in his ODI duty, he made 119. His average of 34.82 at the first class level is only bettered by Chanda Paul and Brathwaite. And that is why I always said, are these selectors watching the cricket? Are they a student of the cricket? Are they studying the cricket? Because how can all these batsmen averaging less than King, having fewer centuries than King in first-class cricket, having lower highest score than King in first-class cricket, or are all of these batsmen getting a chance and Brandon King is waiting? 
It's the same thing they did with Tej Narayan Chandapal. They have him waiting and waiting and waiting and trying others who continue to fail. Now that Chandapal is showing up the selectors that he should have long been in the team. I ask, there's no guarantee that King will do likewise. But I'm asking the selectors that when they're selecting the test team to play in South Africa, on the 28th of February next year, 3 a.m. Tuesday morning, when that first test match against South Africa begins in Centurion, barring injury, I would like to impress upon the West Indies selectors that Brandon King should be in that team. I will have Shea open it also, but Brandon King should be in that team. And I'm not saying this from a Jamaican point of view. I'm saying it because when I talk West Indies cricket, I talk West Indies cricket. I do not see country. But the statistics are there to be seen. Brandon King deserves his opportunity. Just before I go to the next test match that is playing, I'll take some more of your comment. Shashin Singh, good morning and welcome to the show. All that did his role with the ball, his form with, form with the bat is very concerning. Also, I can't see any player from the region who can take all the place in the side. Thank you for your comment, Sashin Singh. But I put it to you that they are replacement. They are replacement. We cannot be comfortable with an all-rounder taking six wickets in six matches. We cannot be comfortable with that. We cannot be comfortable. If we are comfortable, and I'm not talking, I'm not attacking older. If we are comfortable with our premium all-rounder taking six wickets in his last six matches, if we are comfortable with that, we are accepting mediocrity. So tell me if that's what we are accepting. He has not scored an off century in his last six match either. Should we accept that mediocrity? That's all I'm asking. If that's where we are, tell me so that I understand. But we cannot accept that level of performance. We have to talk about it. Cornell Owens, good morning. What about German Blackwood batting average 31 in 49 tests? We need to see some young upcoming batsmen. German average, German Blackwood average of 31 in 49 tests is very concerning. But there are two batsmen in this West Indies team. Take out Chanda Paul, take out Chanda Paul, because he has, he's just in his second test. The last time I checked, it's on the Blackwood and Bradtwaite is averaging above 30 in the West Indies batting lineup. 31 is mediocrity. It's poor. We want our batsmen to be averaging 40. But the fact that Blackwood and Bradtwaite, who averages 35, are the only two batsmen in averaging above 30, above 30. We can't accept that. We expect the average to improve. But will we drop a man who is averaging 31 for someone who is averaging 24, 25? It's a question for us to answer. My concern is that the West Indies are not producing any fast bowling, 140 plus. We do have the fast bowlers, Shashin Singh, but are they prepared to play test cricket? There's a young under 19 guy from Barbados, I think. I will tell you his name is a future broadcast, but he's really clocking it. He's really clocking it up there. He played for the West Indies Academy in the recently concluded Super 50 tournament. Clive Summit. West Indies have been talking about rebuilding for over 20 years. I think it's time. They should get rid of these players over 30 that are failing and pick younger players from the under 19. Now, I hope that in the regional four-day cricket. Now, this is very interesting. Uh, lose, lose with them and win with them later is like on the job training. Now, let me analyze that. If a young man is, is under 19 
and he's not doing well enough to get into the Barbados team or the Guyana team or the Jamaica team. And he cannot make the West Indies Cricket Academy team. You know, so I'm saying, I, I, I don't agree with the idea. And I welcome your comment, Clive Smith. And we are just having a discussion here. It's a discussion. And I'm just putting my point of view forward and then we can discuss it further. I agree with the idea that these older players are failing. But I think that we should not just select players into the West Indies team based on age. We should select them on performances. So I want to see these under-19 players, these under-23 players, outperform these players in the regional four-day tournament and in the regional Super 50 tournament. I want them to outperform these players. That should be their motivation. If you are an 18, 19 year old cricketer in the West Indies, 20, under 23, you should be highly motivated at this time to outperform these guys in the regional four day tournament that is coming up. When you outperform them, outperform them, we in this community are going to shout out your name far and wide and loud and clear. So I'm saying, if at this time, you are an under 23 cricketer in the West Indies. You should be highly motivated. Good morning, guys. Until CWI develop their first class four day tournament, our batsmen will continue to falter against good bowling. Very good point, Michael Kane. Welcome to the show and good morning. Clive Summit, Brooks, Bonner, Reef, or Blackwood are all over 30. Not much, much ears to give to West Indies. I agree with you. I agree with you. But as I said, these younger players they should be highly motivated imagine if you were 21 22 in your teens you should be highly motivated because these west indies batsmen they are average they are below average you should be highly motivated you should have a dint in your eyes as we approach the first class season the new coach would have to invest in new players preferably younger ones Thank you for your comment, Dane Dane. McKinley Clark is from St. Lucia, not Barbados. That's the name Supernova. I'm telling you, this community know more than I. I always said it, that they know more than I. McKinley Clark is the guy. He's quick, he's under 19, and he's bowling some pace. If I'm to pluck someone, he's the one that I would pluck. McKinley Clark, genuine fast bowler. Thank you, Alan, Alan Payne, telling me to. Yusuf Greenwich, do our coaches and players watch video of opposing team? You have to wonder that, Greenwich. You have to wonder that. Because some of the things that we see, some of the tactics that are employed, we have to wonder. We really have to wonder. A very good point. I'm even wondering if our selectors are watching our players. I'm wondering if they are watching videos of our players. I'm wondering if when they go to the match, they sat with their friends, they have a drink, and when somebody holds, they probably say, who hold? Because they probably don't even see who hold. I'm really wondering if, we, if they are even watching our cricket, much more to watch videos. Do they have the discipline to sit down and study the opposition? Do they? Labos Chain, who we all know is afraid it do not bat the short ball so well. You know that on the first day of the test match, it's four short deliveries were bowled to him. Four short deliveries were bowled to Labos Chain on the first day of the test match. And the whole world knows that this man is suspect to short pitch bowling. Look when South Africa back them up. Look at what is going to happen. Look how much sharp pitch delivery is going to be open. The next test match that is currently playing, England against Pakistan. England, having won the first test match, they are now 281 all out on the first day of the second test match. 281 all out. Ben Duckett made 63 and Oli Pope 60. Interestingly, Oli Pope remains the wicked keeper, although Ben Folks. Ben Fox, who many persons believe is the best keeper in the world. England did not play Ben Fox. They gave Ali Pope the gloves for this match again. Surprising. Now, there was a man, there's a youngster named Habra Hamed, 
who have took seven for 114 in 22 overs. That's almost a six run strike rate, but he did the damage. You would take seven for 14 anytime. He was the one who did the damage. Now, he played 14 first class matches before today and gotten 76 wickets. That's almost five wickets, well, over five wickets per match in his first class career. So, seven for 114 was the man who did the damage. And I know that there are a number of Barbara Azam fans in this community. Yes, Pakistan replying, we're 107 for two. Barbara Azam is 61 not out, on his way to another 100. This looked like a sure 100 for Barbara Azam. So that's the next test match that is going on. At the end of the first day's play, England 281 all out. Pakistan in reply, 107 for two. And the Barbara Azam fans will be happy to know that he's on 61 not out. Just... Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that, Yunif, Yusuf Greenwich. I appreciate that. Sashin Singh, I won't say I'm accepting mediocrity with respect to Ola. Ola plays his role by building pressure with the ball while other bowlers release it. That's a good, that's a very, very good constructive statement, Sashin Singh. That, that's, that's, that's very good. I, that's so good. Respect, man. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. And, and, and as I've said, especially on the first day, he did build up some pressure. Today, he went for a little more than three runs per over. But on the first day, he was going at two runs per over. He was building the pressure. He and Joseph, especially in the afternoon, he and Joseph built some pressure on that first day. Anderson to a lesser extent, but Anderson did follow up well. You could give Anderson credit for following up. But once again, the pressure was released by the spinner that the West Indies selectors selected. Very good point, Sashin Singh. Thumbs up. Respect, man. I appreciate that. Now, United States cricket have parted company with their coach. This man, who is a coach of, Uni of United States cricket, have been his contract was not renewed. Jagadesh Arakumar contract was not renewed by USA Cricket. Now, USA failure to qualify for the 2022 T20 World Cup was very disappointing for USA Cricket. They wanted to fire him then, but they did not have any money to pay him off. So they stuck with him until the end of this contract. But things were really eating up because USA tore Papua New Guinea earlier this year, and they did not win any of the matches in Papua New Guinea because they had expect and they were expected to dominate Papua New Guinea. Now, currently, currently, USA is sitting fourth in the ICC League Two table. So, the USA is sitting fourth, having finished their matches. They are in danger of not qualifying for the playoffs to go to the ODI World Cup next year, October. The other thing that works against Kumar was that the U.S. have a policy of playing expatriate cricketers. And Kumar gave a number of homegrown youngsters an opportunity to represent the U.S. Players who were born and grown in the US. And it backfired as these players did not perform. And sitting fourth in the Super League table, a failure to qualify for the T20 World Cup and losing a series in Papua New Guinea, not winning a single match in Papua New Guinea in a series that they were expected to win. USA Cricket have said to Kumar, we will not renew your contract. I want Cricket West Indies to get Shivnaran Chandapal in our under 12 program to go around the country coaching our under 12 cricketers before the US give him a contract for their male team. It is very important that West Indies act quickly. The US have already shortlisted the candidates for their next appointment. They have already shortlisted their candidates. Not like West Indies, 
who from October Phil Simmons resigned and we have still not yet started the process of selecting a new coach from October. This man contracts end last Friday and USA Cricket have already started the process. We hope that Chanda Paul with the remaining batsmen will stand up. We hope that he will play an innings that will remind us of his father's brilliance. For that's our only hope right now. West Indies cannot, cannot win this test match from here. Our best hope is for a magnificent innings from Chanda Paul, Chase, Older, and company. And that we are able to pull through and have a draw. I hope we'll be able to get up to 400. I really do. But for us to get up to 400, we will have to bat out the entire, the entire Thursday play. So that is the opportunity. These guys have an opportunity to be star. As Brian Lara said, when he was young, he always wanted to play in Australia. Because if he knows that if he does well in Australia, he will be set for the rest of the year. Please slash a like on the video, share and subscribe. Thank you everyone for tuning in. And until tomorrow morning, have a wonderful day. Take care of yourself. Take care of your loved ones. And I hope that Brazil win the match. I think the match start 19 minutes ago. Now I'm going to go over there and watch the match. Brazil. Brazil to the world. West Indies to the world also. Take care and goodbye.